This is my favorite time of year. Just beautiful, nice and quiet. Beautiful colors. Um, today the sun is just blasting at that angle. So I wanted to take a ski around the property and use my GoPro to capture some footage, see what I see. So it's a gorgeous day today. Um, temperature says it's really cold, but um, sun is out, it's really low breeze. So I've decided I'm gonna take a ski around the property with the GoPro and um, give you guys a look at what's going on. I'm pretty excited. This is my first ski of the year. I love these little mouse tracks, <laughs> little stripes. This is my large tree. me. Hey guys. Good morning.
When I was unpacking my Aura, I found this tool in the box and learned that uh, Magicraft provides this twist angle tool with every Magicraft Aura spinning wheel that they ship. I didn't know what it was, so I did some research, and yes, it's called a twist angle tool, and what it does is it measures the amount of twist that you've incorporated into your yarn, and it can actually measure a single or applied yarn or whatever. So my question was, well, why do I need this? And the reason you use it is if you want to have good confidence that you've got the same amount of twist at the beginning and the end of your skein. You would use this tool to measure as you're going along the skein to make sure that you're being consistent. Another really interesting application for the twist angle tool is if you want to duplicate a yarn. So let's say you know you found a yarn, commercial yarn or whatever that you really like and you want to make your own similar to that. You would take the twist angle tool and measure that yarn and then try to duplicate the twist and the gauge and stuff. So that kind of solved that mystery for me, but what I thought would be fun would be to take a look at the yarns that I've spun over time and a couple of commercial yarns and just use the tool to see what the twist angle is on those yarns. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got a bunch of stuff here. I'll just go through it quickly. The first I have this, this is a commercial superwash mohair that came with my project bag which I forgot to mention in my last video so this really pretty skein it's from Sockaholic Knitters Brewing Company 190 yards 100% fine merino superwash and it's in like a really pretty drab colors more like an olive light blue it's pretty I'm thinking about making fingerless mitts with that then I have some Angora fiber. This I've had for ages and I vaguely remember I, when I first started spinning I had the boys were younger so we did 4-H and I met I think I met this person at 4-H she had Angora rabbits and she, I think she gave this to me which I'm almost positive because the twist is really loose which I don't I'm a very tight twist spinner by nature. So I know that this wouldn't have been something I'd have made that early on. So that we're going to look at. Then I found this old, this is old, old singles that I spun when I first started. Pulled out this one. So this is actually a two-ply that I made at some point. I do not recall for what purpose, but I kind of, I like the look of it. Very bumpy and uneven. And Then I thought I would just do one of my standard two-ply worsted spin. And then I also wanted to look at my woolen spun, this black one I made. Then I thought it would be fun. So what this is, is a ball of singles that I took off of my wheel from Rhinebeck. So there's a bunch of different spinners that made the yarn here and I unwound it to this point. This is black and green so you can really see the twist. One of the things using the twist angle tool on a single, it's really difficult sometimes to see. I was trying to do it with this black single and I couldn't make it out. So this, the black and the green combined are an easy way to check uh, the single twist angle. So, and also I have a piece of like rope. So this was, um, <laughs> one of my Christmas gifts was tied up with this, which I thought, it, I mean, it's very simple and basic, but I thought it'd be interesting to look at that twist angle because it's got a two ply set up there. Okay, so I'm gonna set this my twist angle tool down on the table. One thing I'm learning is the S and the Z. I never really understood what that was all about. But what it is, it's pretty much just this center section of the letter. When you're looking at your twist, is it going this way or is it going that way? So let's just take this simple piece of rope. That twist is going that way so that's an S twist, so you would use this side of the gauge. When I spin, my S twist is my plying direction, and the Z is my singles. So what you do is you take your string or whatever, I'm gonna use this one first since it's not stretchy, so it's easier to hold it taut. And you hold it so that it's straight up and down like this, and then you just bring it along the gauge and eyeball the point at which the, the angles, right, the lines that are formed by your fibers, 
line up to the gauge. So, I'm terrible at this, by the way, but I'm gonna say it's right about here at 15 is the twist angle. So you see what I'm doing? So I'm trying to, yeah, I think it's right around here. So trying to match how that lines up, maybe even 10, somewhere between 10 and 15. Now I want to check my two-ply worsted weight hand spun. This is applied, so it's gonna go on the S side of the gauge. Like I said, I have a pretty, I'm trying not to stretch it. I apply really tightly. So I'm gonna say I'm right at like 40 degrees. Let's move it up one here. I'm right there at the end, right? All right, so that's that one. Now I wanna take a look at this very loosely plied Angora fiber that I talked about. So let's take that and put it on the tool, deliberately trying not to stretch it. I'm gonna say that's about 25. So this is one I did early on. We're gonna stay on the S side again because of the direction of this. So that's a, even still, even in my early days of spinning, I had a fairly high angle of twist. 35.40. All right, let's take a look at some of these singles now. So here's, so you can see the reason why this is a Z, right? Because the fibers are angling in that direction. All right, so I'm gonna say this one's on the high end as well, right? Maybe 35. This person was twisting the heck out of it and you can even see it because of the, it's really twisted. All right, let's take a look at this really pretty yarn that came in my project bag. So it's S twist, right? I'm gonna put it right up there at 35. I have this, this yarn here that I made. This was a long draw with fiber that I combed with my hand combs and then did long draw. So that's a little bit lower. That's maybe 30. So I just thought it'd be fun to take a look at this tool, understand how to use it and how, what some of the applications would be. Unfortunately, this is not available to purchase. That's actually a gift that comes when you purchase your Aura. One other feature on it that's kind of neat is you can, if you're doing any kind of wrapping, I guess, and you want it, you can wrap your yarn around this tool here and have it sort of hang as you're wrapping. I saw someone doing that with this tool. So there, mystery solved, figured that one out. Not likely I'll use it, but at least I'm, I've got more of an awareness of different types of twist and um, how to measure them. So this is Tobia. She's a more at you. And this is our NPR year, which was 2018. She is out of Sybil and Nitro. So Nitro was a spotted more at Ram and Sybil was a more at you with some modifiers. Tobia, last year we bred her to Harry. She had the Ram that's being a breeder at another farm. She's got a really nice crimpy place, just what we're breeding for. This is Dina. She is out of Jane Eyre and Nitro, and she's a spotted fawn cat mugget. Oops. Shaking. She's been bred a few times, and we've gotten a lot of rams out of Dina, so this year we're hoping to get ewes. Her mother, Jane Eyre, was incredibly fine, and Dina is as well, as you can see by her micron data that I'll put up here. 
So we're going to take a look at her fleece now. This is our Koki. She's a fine cat mugget. Um, she is out of pearl, so she's one of our pearl offsprings, which is just makes her special just by that. Also out of nitro, so this was a year where we used nitro pretty heavily. Um, I'm actually spinning Koki's wool right now in a bulkier yarn because it's a fairly short staple length, so it spins up really nice as a bulky yarn. Cookie. Would you look over there? All right, so let's take a look at her fleece. Let me show you how nice and fine it is. Really pretty creamy color. Extremely fine, as you can see by her micron data. So she was bred this year. There's some nice little pearl mini me's. There we go, pretty girl. So this is Ophavia, and she's a twin. She was the finer crimp of the two ewes that were white ewes. They're out of Rewick and Oberyn. Oberyn was a black ram, Rewick was white, and Fabia is the only ewe left from that breeding. Um, she gave us Harry, who we used this last two years in breeding, and her lamb was Belva two years ago, a beautiful white ewe that's in our flock now. We didn't breed her last year because we thought she was too small. Um, this year she was one of the heavier ones, even though she's shorter in stature. So. She's got a really nice, spectacular fleece. Um, we bred her this year with Jon Snow, so looking forward to seeing what she produces for us this year. Pretty girl. Pretty, nice length, lustrous. Nice crimp. Not as fine a crimp as Koki's, but still very nice. This is Audi. So if you didn't notice, the year of this set of lambs or ewes was the year we used NPR correspondence. So she's named after Audi Cornish. There's a lot of special things about this ewe. First of all, she's directly out of Itasca. And her um, sire was Nitro, who was a spotted Morat ram. Um, the thing I love too about Audi is I just love her woolly pole. She's got a lot of character and this Really, she stands out in the flock. Plus, she's black. She's a solid black, which is always, uh, you know, a really popular color. And um, she's produced every year. We've bred her. Uh, I think this is her third year being bred, and has given us really beautiful lamb. So last year is Ram. We named him Sebastian. He's the flashy one with the skirts. He's um, going to be a sire of a couple uh, lambs this year. So. Really, really excited about her. So now I just want to take a look at her fleece. I don't remember if I, I think I sheared her last year because she was one of the bigger ewes and I was concerned about being able to rule that size of ewe. This is Yuki. So she is out of Genoa and Nitro. So Genoa was, well she is a ewe that was a result of artificial insemination where we um, used some straws from UK rams. So um, Yuki's fleece is pretty much spectacular. It's what we're breeding for as far as length, fineness, crimp. She's a fawn cat mugget and we used her ram lamb this year in breeding. He was really nice. So it's just a really nice, pretty color as well, like a more of a taupe, a little bit darker font cat mugget. 
So just, she's really the full package and just a gorgeous view. Beautiful top line. Everything is what it's supposed to be. So that's Yuki. So this is Susan. It's named after Susan Stanberg. She's out of our Georgiana, who was a Shayla U and out of Nitro. So Susan did inherit the spotting from Nitro. You can see she's got that smurzlet marking. And she also got the, the modified from her mother. So she's, so she's the modified version of the brown base, which is Miogit. And she's got a really nice fleece. So this is the Miogit fleece. It's a beautiful honey golden color. And it's this color all the way through. She's gotten lighter every year. So this is really pretty. We didn't breed Susan this year, so she was supposed to go into um, Smiley's group. But Smiley's group got canceled because his, the pen we were going to put them in was just too soaking wet. So she ended up going uh, with all the lambs and the older ewes this year, so she'll get a chance next year. Lakshmi. Out of Rosamond and Oberyn. Rosamond is a fawn cat mug at you, and Oberyn is a solid black ram. So we got a great cat mug at it, so a blending of two really interesting sheep. So she's a great cat mug at She's lamb for us before. She's got a very nice fleece, very soft and crimpy. I brewed her last year, so I'm hoping to brew her again this year. And she gave us two really nice gray cat mugget lambs last year. Um, we still have her ewe lamb, so she's uh, a really pretty gray cat mugget also. So a great ewe in our Lakshmi. This is Nita. She's a fawn cat mugget ewe out of Treviso and Nitro, so it's definitely a Nitro year. And just a really nice all-around fawn cat mug at you. She threw uh, two white lambs last year, and we still have the you out of her. Um, great mother, I was able to brew her, and got a beautiful, beautiful fleece. We put our coats on so early this year, so their fleeces are even that much cleaner. Really fine crib. 